Chen. <laughs> what is up, my exchange family from all over the world? And thank you for tuning in to another episode of Chief Chat. My name is Chief Master Sergeant Kevin Osby, and I'm your senior enlisted advisor for the Army and Air Force Exchange Service. Before we get started with our guest today, I would like to introduce my wonderful co-host, Julie Mitchell. How you doing, Julie? Hey, good morning, Chief. It's so great to see you. It is. It is. And it's just me and you this week. It's just it's, the two of us, right? It's just the two of us. Are you going to sing? Just the two of us. No. So, so, so Leah, Leah, yeah, I can't say. I'm sorry. I, I, but <laughs> just I will. Get I, but, but Leah's on leave this week, so it's, it's me and Julie holding down the fort. Uh, we have some very, very, very special guests uh, today that uh, have kind of, they're here to promote their show that centers around my favorite thing in the whole wide world, which is desserts. And so without further ado, Julie, please introduce today's guest. We have such a fun group with us today. They're part of Fox's new show, Crime Scene Kitchen, a reality banking competition with a twist. The host is actor and an actor and comedian known for the soup and community. And he is joined by two contestants, an Army and Air Force veteran. Please give a warm chief chat welcome to Crime Scene Kitchen host Joel McHale and the deliciously talented contestants, Aaron Roth and Amanda Carter. Hey. Hi, everyone. Uh, hi, we are so happy you're here. And for our get, uh, guests joining us watching today, let us know where you're watching from. You can drop a note in the comments and we will try to read your questions live. We host Chief Chat every week. Follow our page and enable your notifications so that you notify uh, so that you're notified when we're live and you don't miss a moment. We have a fantastic military exclusive guests lined up for you all summer long. So Joe, Aaron, and Amanda, thank you so much for joining us on Chief Chat. You're welcome. Thanks for having us. Thank you for having us. Uh, this is way better than Colonel Talk. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, it's going to be way better than a, any Colonel talking. So, uh, right. no. So Amanda, Amanda's familiar with how enlisted we we seem to be the the, uh, the more you know fun fun group of not the, no offense to officers, um, <laughs> Aaron. I like I said, no, we love officers as well, but. Enlisted, we know how to have a good time. So, uh, can, can you let our viewers know where you call, where you, where you all are calling us from? I'm calling you from the uh, soon to be 51st state of Washington, D.C. <laughs> no, no, let's not do that. It should be. <laughs> and I am calling from Waldorf, Maryland. And I am calling from Waldorf, California. <laughs> <laughs> nice and early. Thanks for joining us so early. Appreciate you. I know. It's just past nine. I don't know what I'm doing out here. It's crazy. <laughs> Well, Joel, congratulations on Crime Scene Kitchen, which airs Wednesdays on Fox at nine o'clock, eight o'clock central. This is not your average baking competition. So tell us about the show and what makes it so different. Well, thank you, Julie. And thank you for all your Funko Pops behind you or whatever those dolls are. Um, <laughs> it looks like you're in a, uh, a, a toy shop, which I'd like to visit someday. So, uh, well, Crime Scene Kitchen, it's, uh, it's a competition baking show where something has been baked, but the bakers like Aaron and Amanda don't know what that is. And they go into the Crime Scene Kitchen, they get two minutes and there is evidence of something that has been baked and they have to gather that evidence then try to recreate that all while there's a dead body on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> and they have to step over it a lot. It's pretty nerve wracking. <laughs> so yes, so when, you, when, you when you introduce the show is so somebody had to bake something and, and nobody knows what it is. That sounds like anytime I get in the kitchen. <laughs> so <laughs> I'll bake something. And you would do great in this show. <laughs> and nobody knows exactly what it is. Well, you, the different the spectrum of guesses um, of what it can be is can sometimes everyone is pretty close, and then other times it is not close at all. And uh, but then some sometimes people get close, and it doesn't taste as good as it could. And then others are way off, but it's so tasty that they get through. So uh, it's really all over the map and. Uh, then a team gets eliminated each week, and they are um, 
They're usually put on a boat and just pushed out into the ocean. We've never heard from them. (laughs) That's what's happening after the show. Thank you for that behind the scenes insight. Those poor, poor contestants. Mm. Yeah, I I know. So Aaron and Amanda, so you both have had some incredible military careers. So Aaron, you served in the army and you retired after 24 years as a Lieutenant Colonel. And Amanda, you served in the Air Force retiring as a Master Sergeant. So thank you all both for what you've done for this nation and and kind of blazing the trail for me. Uh, you know, as a, as a currently serving service member. So can you tell us about your military careers and what led you to a life of service? I'll start. For me, uh, the military uh, was an option when I was in, um, when I was in college, one of my uh, advisors for this, I was, I was the president of the NAACP and he was the uh, uh, MS3 instructor at RTC name was Colonel Alexander. It's like, oh, Hardaway you know, you got some great leadership skills. I think you should go into the ROTC. I'm like, yeah, right. You know, and so yeah. he kept on me and on me. And I went by and to the uh, military science department and talked to him. And it's like, you know what, this might be, you know. And so I went ahead and I went, I went the ROTC route and I got commissioned as a second lieutenant when I graduated from Alcorn. And it was my life of service. My dad um, is a retired Air Force as well. I had great uncles, uncles who were in the military as well. So I come from a military family. So that was one of the ways we can go as far as public service. Absolutely. Nice. (laughs) And I hail from Flint, Michigan and was trying to figure out what I wanted to do next after graduating high school. And of course you hear the commercials, see the world, get an education. It's like, why not? And so I went to a recruiter, listened to what they had to say and figured I'm gonna have to work somewhere. Why not the military? Let's try it out. I had um, members around me who were in other branches. I knew I wasn't going to the army, no offense, Aaron. And I knew I wasn't (laughs) going to the other branches. So Air Force was a no brainer for me. And um, once I got in, my intentions were only to do four years, but of course have to work somewhere. It was great. I met a great group of people, was having a time of my life and said, hey, 20 years, I retire when I'm only 40. I can have another career. Perfect. Awesome, awesome. And, and Amanda, you're also a, a fellow medic. So uh, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm a I'm a pseudo medic. Uh, I'm, I like I like the admin administrative part of medicine, but uh you were actually out there, you know, doing CPR and stuff. So I salute to you on, on that you. one. And you too. Thank you for your service. Thank you both. Aaron and Amanda, how did you go from the military to baking sweet treats on national television? And what sort of skills do you bring from your time in the military into the kitchen? They went AWOL. <laughs> <laughs> they're, uh, they're currently going to be court martial once they, the military so- police get a hold of them. Oh my gosh. I'm so sorry to hear that, but as long as you can still bake for us, it's all yeah. good, right? And I'm, glad, I'm, I'm glad you were able to get on the show before you actually got apprehended, so. Yeah, <laughs> but it was worth it for the tasty treats they made. Yeah. So, um, I don't know, after, for me, it was uh, by happenstance, and it was this full circle moment for me. My daughter, I started baking. I always baked my whole life, but... Um, I was baking and a a friend up the street said, hey, by the way, I'm having this party. Can you bake something for me? And I would bake and he was like, oh, that was nice. And each time he had an event, he'd come to me and ask me to bake. And during this time, my daughter actually introduced me to Yolanda Gamp. So we would bond watching her um, videos and I would try to duplicate what she was doing. And one day he paid me. He uh, He just gave me money for an event that I did for him and it clicked. If I could get the science behind what I was doing and love to do, then I could make a living from it. And um, the very next day I called Law Academy and enrolled and started January 3rd, 2017. That wasn't that long ago, my goodness. And you're having all this success. Congratulations, I love that. Thank you. And it's because of Aaron that I even appeared on TV, so. Oh, you got to share that. Uh, <laughs> yeah, Aaron, what about you? <laughs> yeah. 
So I'm from Mississippi, the great state of Mississippi, and down south, your reputation is based upon your cooking skills. So if you're asked to bring ice and sodas to the cookout, then that lets you know where you stand <laughs> in the hierarchy of your skill. <laughs> and so I love desserts. I've been making desserts for a long time, and desserts are my passion. And so in the military, I was the person that people would come to for different things like cheesecakes and such. And so right before I retired, I said, you know what, I think I'm going to just quote unquote, bake cakes on the side just to keep busy post-retirement. But my mother said, if you want to hear God laugh, tell him your plan. And so I named the business after my mom because she passed about four weeks after I told her I was going to retire. And so I named the business after her. But um, so yeah, initially we started off doing desserts until I had a corporate client say, hey, Aaron, uh, I was doing that grand opening. Do you do heavier d'oeuvres? Well, I do now. And so they went into corporate <laughs> catering. <laughs> so corporate catering, you know, it helps pay the bills. But yeah, and so ironically, with the pandemic, this time last year, I had considered closing the business because we had, you know, lost so many events. And But by the grace of God, I, I still remain, you know, profitable. I still remain doing things. And then in March, <laughs> I get a call, I get a DM from this lady saying, hey, uh, would you like to be on the TV show? Like, yeah, right. You know, you get a lot of things, <laughs> you know, oh, yeah. you get a lot of those things. And I'm quite sure Joel gets a lot of things like that in DM, but. <laughs> that lady, that lady is always DMing me. <laughs> <laughs> Sliding in, huh? And yeah. So, and so I was like, I don't know. And so anyway, I gave her my number and she called and, so, and she was like, giving me the whole backdrop. I was like, do you know anybody that you could, you know, that would go on with you? I'm like, well, people that have skills, not a whole lot. I only know one person. <laughs> and that's my, my classmate from pastry school, Amanda. She was like, well, give Amanda a call and, and see if she'd be interested. I'm like, she'll be interested. So I called her <laughs> immediately afterwards. She probably thought I was joking. I was like, Amanda, I swear I'm not making this up. I said, somebody called me and wanted, you know, this new show. And at the time, we didn't know what the name of the show was. We just knew. In fact, we, know, we, we didn't even know the network, you know, not till we signed everything. But yeah, and so Amanda's like, sure, I'll do it. And the rest is history. <laughs> so Amanda, it sounds like you got voluntold by the colonel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you know how that goes. And, uh, <laughs> and, and, and a true television producer doesn't go, oh, that's great, Aaron. Can you give me Amanda's number and I'll call her? They're like, you call her and then ask her. <laughs> go, do, go do my job. Well, well, Aaron, I'm glad you put it in perspective why I, they always ask me to bring the napkins and the aluminum for you. <laughs> so so I, I'm, I'm there now. I, un, I totally understand. Wait, now, Amanda and Aaron, you baked such tasty stuff, and we were, I definitely had to get on my treadmill a lot more while we were shooting that because the stuff you made was so good. How does it compare to military food? Oh, that's, um, that's a great that's question. A great question. Joel, do you want to <laughs> host Chief Chat with us? That's a great question. <laughs> well, you know, Hi, uh, it's a lot like the talk. I'm like Jerry O'Connell. <laughs> <laughs> I, think it's actually, I think military food is getting better because, um, well, maybe that's just for certain officers. Because I do know that um, certain people do get to go to culinary school. It may be yeah. a military version of it, but but I don't think they're necessarily in all the dining facilities. I think they're cooking for special people. <sighs> you know, those officer type people. And oh, those, command, or, and those command senior enlisted personnel. Yes. <laughs> oh, li listen, that, that sounds like a shot at me. I was like, I'm not, I'm still getting, I'm still getting cheese, uh, what's that, the molten chocolate cake from Chili's. <laughs> <laughs> Now, Amanda, once again, you're the nicest, you two are the nicest people on the show. Oh, and so are you telling me you would not say that military food is is not great compared to your baking? Well, to be quite honest, I haven't had it in a long time, but compared uh -oh. to my baking, no, no way. All right, all right. No way. Because I, I went to an officer's club at Edwards Air Force Base one time, and I was like, is there anything here that's not deep fried? And... Uh, <laughs> And then they were like the coffee, and then, and then they brought me a deep fried mug full of coffee. <laughs> it was wonderful. Well, I will tell you. So we got these things called MREs. I'm sure all y'all are familiar with MREs, and they got a pound cake in the MRE that I'm not. I'm not. I'm not comparing pound cakes to your pound cake. But what I'm saying, when you're in the field and you ain't had a shower in about two weeks, and that. <laughs> 
and you all you had like was water and, and this uh crackers and, and m ms that pound cake is not that bad i'm just yeah. telling you i'm just saying so let me get this straight chief after two <laughs> weeks of not showering Correct. and only eating crackers and water this pound cake tasted okay <laughs> yes, absolutely okay yeah no that's a ringing endorsement <laughs> okay. you, don't you think you would eat your shoe at that point uh, at, yes like after after i'm finished with the mre and if, if i got two more weeks left and i didn't have anything else then my shoe would probably be a, a bottom line. <laughs> so if you saw if, if it's the end of two weeks only water and crackers there's the pound cake there's chili's molten chocolate cake what are you eating oh i'm going chili's all day long that's that's <laughs> yeah that's that that's that's yeah, this that's my that's my jam. Be sponsored by Chili's, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> so 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 Joe, so Joe, so you get a chance to kind of look at the at the contestants while they're scrambling and trying to figure out this whole situation uh, of of a dessert, and you get that different perspective. So from the outside looking in, what qualities do you think makes a successful contestant? A successful contestant. Uh, well, uh, boy, but of course they need to be able to bake and guess. Uh, <laughs> it, it stops pretty quick if you can't do that. But we did have contestants early on be very far off the mark, even though they were skilled bakers. Uh, there was a couple named Natalie and Anthony who were very talented, but they guessed pretty far off twice. And <laughs> Uh, at one point, they I don't know, I remember what the challenge was, but they were like, seems like donuts and the islands, and we're just going to pick an <laughs> island thing. And, uh, and then we all looked around, I was like, was there an island somewhere? And there, there was not an island, uh, but they were super nice. Um, and that so that, you really have to have good guessing skills, and then you have to be able to back it up uh, once you get there. Uh, and... Uh, and I would say you time management is also very important because some teams would finish with extra time and other teams, you would have thought they were diffusing a bomb uh, <laughs> because they were scrambling around and throwing yeah. shit everywhere. And, uh, and it made for good television. I have to say that. Um, so, so that's you, that's, and also you can't be a, a horrible person you have to be you have to have some sort of like if, if you're on camera and they're like so how's it going here what are you guys baking and then if you just go and, <laughs> and that's why like amanda and aaron were always so nice and kind and they were talkative and i as a an annoying person try to distract people endlessly and amanda and aaron can tell you that and they'll be like, will you just please let it? And they would be very kind about it. They'd be like, okay, all right. Well, these uh, cakes are cooling now. So if you could leave and, uh, and I'd be like, I'm not going anywhere. And so, uh, so they were very patient with me, which shows great, you know, like maturity and their military background kicking in because I'm sure there was many annoying times. Uh, so, oh, yeah. so they, uh, yeah. So as, I mean, I, I mean, they've done very, they did very well. And so I, that's about, so what I'm saying is Julie and Chief, um, that's your first name, Chief, right? Oh, and, yeah, yes, yes. Because <laughs> uh, it kind of look. I'm dyslexic because it kind of looks like Chef Kevin on okay. uh, <laughs> which I was like, look, another chef. Uh, but I will say, and not to, not just to wrap it up, not wrap, I'm not leaving, but uh, uh, the, the, the level of baking, like the, the skill level was incredible incredibly high and um and i came in as a as an amateur compared to obviously curtis stone and, and yolanda gamp who are like astronauts when it comes to deciphering these things and to i mean they, i mean curtis could pick that thing up and tell you exactly what happened and then yolanda she had like a computer mouth uh i've never seen anything like it she would put a bite in her mouth and she would just sit there and then she'd be like here's exactly what i'm tasting and she could just take the thing apart so uh, what just describing was kind of remarkable. So anyway, uh, my job, my job was just to keep, you know, people annoyed and jokes flying. Uh, but I was, yeah, I was pretty amazed by Fox with the level of talent they got. 
That's a very long answer from Joel McHale. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, Aaron and Amanda, you have been great to watch week after week. I've been rooting for you here in Dallas the, the whole time. Oh. Tell us about your time on the show and how have you kept yourselves in the game week after week? There are a couple weeks it was looking a little dicey for y'all. My fingers were, were crossed. And so how, how, how's it been? I have a whole new respect for TV world, movie world, anything dealing with production. It is it is, you have no idea the amount of work it takes to do a show. And I just have a whole new respect for, I don't see how people do it day on day. I just, I just don't see it. Cause you know, it's early days and late nights. Um, so th thank goodness, you know, being in the military, we were used to that, you know, um, you know, as the old army used to say, we do more before 9 a.m. The most people do all day. Yeah, yeah. That's TV world. And so it's just, just, and then, you know, the people that the, the moving cameras and the, in the difference, it's just, it's, it's just mind boggling. And then to watch like, like Joel and, and how he hosts and, and the takes and stuff and just boom, 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 just the same face every time. I, I, it, you know, I just don't, I just, it's just, it's just, it's just mind boggling. But, you know, Amanda and I, you know, for, I would say, and I can speak for Amanda, but, you know, I would say our faith played a huge part. You know, we we uh, we definitely said a prayer before every show. And we you guys are atheists, right? <laughs> no. <laughs> not at all. Oh, not, oh, that's so weird. I didn't realize that. OK. But uh, but yeah, we just you know, we talked about it. We you know, we did AARs after each after each show. Nice. And just made sure. Okay, how can we do better next time? And we just talk, talk, talk. And you know, I know she had my back. I definitely had hers. And that's how we we came to that show. We did not want to be the angry women. You know, that's one thing we did not want to project. Um, you know, more so for our families and for the you know the the services that we represent. So, yeah. But it was it was a great time. It's some great people. Again, I have a huge tremendous respect for anybody in that world because yeah that's what you, you didn't show uh aaron you didn't show much anger but during some of the prayers you were like <laughs> you'd be like and dear god may amanda get her shit together <laughs> today because yesterday she really crapped the bed amen that i thought was passive aggressive <laughs> passive aggressive and you know profanity in the prayer i don't think so. <laughs> I'm not trying to get struck by lightning, Joel. <laughs> you know? God? You know, I don't, I don't play with God. Like I will, I, I want to uh, echo something that Aaron just said, because I get my cackles up about uh, when people talk about Hollywood and the business. They're like, well, you guys just all sit around the pool and you read a little bit and then you show up and they give you a margarita and you go home and you get a tan and you do some printing and plugging. You know. And I'm so glad that somebody, you know, two people from the military saw, like, those are regular hours. That, that's how it's like, like, you know, people are starting to get to work at 4, 3 in the morning and don't get done till 1 in the morning and then come back. And uh and i i'm i whatever one says like yeah, it's kind of an easy business and i was like we work harder than everybody you jerks and <laughs> i mean no i mean not we never even come close to as working hard as people do in the military we're not doing that and but we if if you're making a baking show we are putting in the hours i'll say that right it's yeah those two hours or two and a half hours that we're in the, at that first day of shoot I think it was what a twenty-one hour day for us. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So Man. that was yeah. That was we did a thing on Community where we w started work. It was the last episode of one of our seasons. We started work at six a.m. We went till six a.m. and then we started our next day two hours later. So we did twenty-four hours and then another twelve hours. And then um, if someone said. Hey, what's your name? I would be like Captain Crunch. Nice to meet you. <laughs> Man, yeah, I but you guys, it was amazing how they can because we knew that you guys had it was it was going to be rough. But the contestants, uh, I mean, like I mean, Amanda and Aaron are are young people who are in <laughs> physical shape, and some people weren't. I was just like, I hope they like they had yeah. to. We had to give the, yeah, a lot of people were struggling, but they they did come through. 
Yeah, Aaron and Amanda definitely are, are, are accustomed to that, that world. Uh, that they've been, you know, we live live in that world. Uh, hurry up and wait, and, uh, and and all kind of other things that we do in the military to to prepare you for something like that. So I'm glad those skills. You even got an after action report, like y'all got a, a hot wash and everything after the yeah. thing. So that's that's awesome. That's awesome to hear. So so Joe, can you tell us what your kitchen skills are like? Like uh, so, if if you were a contestant, how would you how would you fare? I'd like to get a hot wash here and avoid this question. <laughs> hot washes are great. Yeah. Hot washes a hot are. wash. <laughs> a hot that, wash? You yeah. want to tell them, Chief? Tell them what a hot wash so, is. It's so not a hot fun. wash is like an after action report. So you go through your exercise or you go through your day or you go through whatever it is that you just went through. And then you kind of recount, okay, what were the strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, threats, just kind of. Uh, you you kind of analyze the whole entire exercise or whatever it is you're going through, and I, don't ask me why they call it a hot wash. I have no. Oh, idea. I thought you meant like after the day is done, you get a shower. No, 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 there's no, no spa no. involved. It's a yeah. it's a meeting, is what yeah, it, is. it is. It's a boring it meeting about what you did wrong. That's listen. You you've already went through a, a exercise that lasted three days, and now you got to finish that and then have a hot wash to talk about all the stuff that y'all screwed up on the whole entire time doing exercise so it's that yeah, that's I, it in a nutshell but it helps us get better it helps us fine tune it helps us fine tune right, but it is a misleading name because it sounds like <laughs> oh a nice hot shower after three days of just crackers and pound cake oh that's this it. Is great <laughs> that's what it is it's a farce it, like i said it gets if you're just coming in you're like oh man I, this hot wash sounds like something cool and then you get to it and it's like okay this is not what i imagined no uh i would be been the worst contestant uh, they've ever had. Uh, I do not bake. I'm not a good baker because it's too hard. Uh, baking, and I think people see from the show, and I really learned, baking is like putting together a rocket and then launching the rocket. And uh, because as you guys, as we all know, like when you put together a rocket, when you say launch, all, everything has to go right in just a few seconds. It's not like you can go back or fix a little thing. Everything has to, the coordination a lot. Now, I, I will cook the shit out of a steak and I can do brisket <laughs> and I can do, uh, I can do like beef ribs. I can do, I, I'm great at meat and fish and vegetables. Be, I mean, but with like, it, I can have a really nice steak and if I undercook it, no problem. I will throw it back on the grill or uh, put it in the oven for another five minutes. And the person that wanted the well done steak or the, 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 the medium uh, will not. And the other person will have the rare and they'll be fine. And but you cannot do that with a princess cake. And you, you, can't, you can't do that. You can't even you can't do that with a carrot cake. You can't do it with a pie. So yeah. I learned a ton. And, and so I, I, I would I would be a terrible contestant. Uh, cause I'm very abusive to my hair and makeup people. Um, but, uh, but yeah, so I'd, I'd be terrible. That's why when you get like Amanda Aaron walking in, they already had these big military careers and now they're making these creations. It, it really shows me that I'm lazy. No, you know. <laughs> As a man that hosts more TV shows and events than almost anyone. <laughs> Yeah, but I'm good at the hosting thing. And then it's like, what else do you do? I'm like, you fly a helicopter? No. no. <laughs> I'm, I, I can tell you where the cheapest gas in the valley is. That's, hey. that's pretty much, yeah. That's pretty much Listen, it's, it's okay being a one trick pony. I haven't even found my trick yet, Joel. So it's, it's all good. Like I'm, I'm getting there though. <laughs> I Look, think I'm, nar I'm narrowing it down to a few things, but uh, yeah. <laughs> it looks like you're at a, I don't know, like a, like you have your own religion called the exchange. And, oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. No, no, no. Like I'm actually at, uh, so I was going to shout them out, but I'm at Barksdale Air Force Bases Exchange. Uh, oh. I'm, I'm on leave, and but I could not not do this show with my, with my, my veterans and and Joel and so I was like, you know what? I'm gonna go to the nearest exchange, uh, oh. which and and do the show here. So big shout out to all the folks here at Barksdale that that had to rearrange a whole bunch of crap just for me to come in here and do this interview. So uh, thank you, Ellen and her crew here at Barksdale Air Force Base for all the love. And he put on a uniform too. I did. I did. I took my uniform with me on leave. 
Wow. wow. I won't say stand up, but okay. <laughs> I, I, I got the, the whole get up because I had to walk through the stores. So oh, could, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, if it I was at pants. home, yeah. yeah, I would have pajama pants and a uniform top, and that's just how life would be. But uh, I actually had to put on the whole entire uniform because I had to come on base and get through all the, the folks so they won't be like, Chief, what? WTF? What you know? What's what's going right, on with the right, uniform? So right, yeah. Right. <laughs> what does what does WTF mean? It, whiskey Whiskey Tango Foxtrot. That's what uh, I know. <laughs> hey Joe, you should know. <laughs> oh, I know. I just was gonna see if uh, Chief would say it. Because you know, there's no profanity in the military. Zero. None. Absolutely yes, none. It's just, it's just <laughs> we, we I just need um I need some like cool camel pants. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and some boots, like cool boots. Oh yeah, we got you, Joe. Don't worry about it. We got you. Great, great. I'll hey, drive but, up there. Barstow's a quick hop and a skip for me, so that's great. <laughs> but, but Chief and Julie, I, I gotta say, you know, Joe was was so was so just. He was great, not just in front of the camera. He was great behind the camera. He talked to us. He was just a nice guy. You know, I, I you know, I knew I knew of him before the show, but I have just. He was just so awesome, and he just talks to you even when the camera's not there he just has conversation and he gets to know you and it was just really nice but his brand of comedy is by far one of the best he you ha you have no idea the stuff we had to endure behind it when the camera I mean trying to keep a straight face when the camera's on you and then Joel's cracking jokes behind it and you're just like you sitting there and you just, you know, you're just trying to, you know, <laughs> oh my God, Joe is just, oh my God. He, he, he has a way of, of making you laugh, but not being so demeaning about it. He, he can make jokes about you and you can laugh at the jokes about you. That's just, I just, I'm Joe, I just love your brand of company, but he was hilarious. You have no idea if Fox ever does the behind the scenes, <laughs> Tapings of what Joe, oh my God, it would be a bestseller. Cause he, oh, no. they heard, oh yeah, you don't know. So one, don't. Of the, one of the things they cut was he actually called our first pie a soup. So he said, uh, <laughs> let's put that soup off to the side, get me a straw and I'll drink that later. Oh man. Hey, it yeah, is what it is. That, 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 lemon, that was a lemon chiffon and uh, <laughs> it drank great. It, it, it just, Mm, well hydrated. <laughs> I'm yeah, so wish... glad you guys survived that. That's awesome. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know why Fox didn't put that in. Uh, I was because I was throwing like a four hundred, four or five hundred jokes, and then they take one of those jokes. And, yeah. it. and it was all. There was at one point they were like, "Hey, every they were like, okay, here's Aaron and Amanda. They're making this." Uh, they're they're doing pretty well. They're ahead of schedule, and then they're like, just just make sure you thank them for their service. And and then I'd be like, wait, the service to the dessert or <laughs> military service? The military service. And I'd be like, okay, great. And then uh, and then I would say, thank you for being in the space force. And <laughs> right, yes. They were like, you were. We were not in the space force. And then of course I would always be like, so. Air Force is better than the Army, I hear. Is that right? And then, yeah, then I'd flip it the next day, and it was made me very happy. There, I was like, anyway, so you guys in the Marines? No, I'm Marines. <laughs> made me so happy. Well, you, you, you'll be happy to know, Joe, that all your jokes are are. There's no editing in the Facebook Live world, so all your jokes are on camera, and and it's solidified for the. For, the, for, for eternity, basically. Oh, fuck yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Why, Chief? Why, Chief? You you walked right into that one. Julie, you Julie, you walked you right at? into it. Save me, Julie. Whiskey oh. Tango Foxtrot. Yes, <laughs> awesome, awesome. Good job, both of you. <laughs> So on that note, we do have soldiers, airmen, guardians, sailors, Marines, Coast Guard members, military oh, families. Yeah. Guardians, uh, Guardians, Space Wars personnel are called Guardians, Guardians. of the Galaxy. Yes. Uh, yes. Groot, Groot is here. It's great. Yes, Star, they're, Star Lord. <laughs> <laughs> they're all watching from all over the world and wanted to see what words of hope or encouragement you can share with our nation's heroes today. Joel, we can start with you. Oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> or not, no. it's really up to you. <laughs> The people that have dedicated their lives to defending this country want to hear from a basic cable clip show host slash baker host. That's great. 
bring it on. <laughs> well, guys, from a game show host's perspective, oh, no, I, uh, you guys are doing, obviously, you guys, you're doing the hard work. You're the guys out there on the front lines and doing, and I, I'm, I'm running around telling people their pies might be a little soupy. So uh, take this with a grain of salt or a grain of sugar. But, uh, you know, thank you. And uh, I, I guarantee, I, I, the one, my, one of my regrets in life was not being in the military because it took me a long time to learn discipline and hard work. And uh, I'm just about catching up to it now. So you guys are way ahead of the schedule. And, you know, the good news, if you come to Barstow, uh, uh, you know, free pants on Chief, Chief Kevin Osby. <laughs> I got you for the pants. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like that was a, a decent pep talk for me. <laughs> it was. Everybody appreciated that. Thank you, Joel. Um, I do want to pause for a moment. I want to turn to our live feed and read some of the comments that are coming in. Um, so Rod Conyers says, Miss Erin is a great friend. Her and Amanda remind me of Kim Conyers from Delicious Delicacies Catering. I don't know if that means anything to either of you ladies. Um, you guys friend with the Conyers? With Con with Rob? Rod, 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 Rod Conyers. Rod? No. Maybe he just means like he is a kindred spirit with you and that's the type of friend he means. But I don't know. Um, Emily Freeman says, Aaron, <laughs> I am in Mobile, Alabama, and I own Nini's Pakes pies and cakes i'm going to be at the car show at president jackson's house on july 17th would love for you to stop by i'm there <laughs> <laughs> and rod conyers he also he seems to be involved with a group called international young chefs and so he said that um he's gonna get them watching the show uh, we have a lot of thank you for your service a lot of amanda and aaron are great um people commenting about the long days and nights that it takes um to pull off a tv show production so and somebody is asking aaron and amanda if you have a it's marisa marisa is asking aaron and amanda do you have a signature dish lobster <laughs> <laughs> well it it depends, you know, being a, a pastry chef, you, you go with what the client wants. I would say my top three, as far as what people would like, men, I say men folk, uh, the men tend to like the Jack Daniels triple chocolate cake. Oh man. Um, that seems to be very popular among the men. Um, and then we do a limoncello tiramisu, that's very popular. And then the third one will be our red velvet cake. Yep, chocolate cake always, you throw a little liquor in there, you can never go wrong. So um, some William Wolf in a pecan bourbon sweet potato pie. They love that um, cheesecake. And it just depends. She's right. It depends on who the client is, what they want. And so um, whatever they want, we just elevate those flavors just like we did on the show. They did. And they drank a lot of that bourbon. <laughs> <laughs> so it if was, we can... It was, it, was was it was just in our room, though. <laughs> what y'all just... King whole water, man. Until <laughs> I watched your show, y'all, I had never heard of a princess cake before. I was like, what is this? Like, this looks delicious. It's green and it's a dome and it's pink inside. That looked, I had never heard of that before. And it looked wonderful. That's yeah. the dessert nerd in me. You know, I love to know the history of dessert. So I, yeah. 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 We, well, we I, I had never eaten that cake. And it, the, I think it was Louise and Natalie's. I think they got, was that, am I, I can't remember. <laughs> They did. They, yeah, they, they got the clue. They it was, if you ever get a chance to have a one, try it. I mean, I had never even thought of it being in the lexicon of dessert. And I was like, this is insane. And uh, <laughs> yeah, I recommend it. It looked delicious. I just need to figure out where to get one because I can't bake. So I think uh, President Jackson's house. <laughs> <laughs> See you there next I, weekend. I Mobile. Mobile. You can probably get a couple there. You hear that? You need to make a princess tart of cake. Man. So I, in my mind, when you said Jack Daniels triple chocolate cake, I'm thinking like Crown Royal. So let's let's take the Jack Daniels out. Let's put the Crown Royal in there. And let's see how that tastes. So that's so maybe maybe the Crown Royal vanilla. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm good with that you too. You have to match the the alcohol to the dessert. You yeah. just can throw in 
vodka yeah. into you have to it has to like like your dark liquors tend to bring out the notes and chocolate so you have to be very careful on what you put in stuff you just oh, yeah no crown yeah. crown is definitely dark so I, I i can attest to that i can bear i can validate that all day long so oh god <laughs> Yeah, this is a hot bath of oh, <laughs> a hot wash. Uh, no, I like a hot bath. <laughs> <laughs> bath okay. So, so Joe, Aaron, Amanda, as I have to ask the experts, what are each of you your favorite desserts personally? What 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 are you? Hmm. Well, I'll go first. Being from Mississippi, I love just two of my favorite desserts. My mother called it my birthright. I love peach cobbler, and I love pecan mm. pie. Those oh. two are my favorite by far. So what was the second one? Pecan pie. Pecan. Oh, you probably say pecan, but we say pecan. Pe I say pecan. I'm from Louisiana. We say pecan. So. <laughs> yes, I'm from Michigan. We say pecan too. <laughs> <laughs> I say Crown Royal. With <laughs> so for me, you know, I, it really depends on what I have moved. Like, um, my mixer broke and I, I was craving chocolate. I'm like, I'm going crazy. I want something sweet. And of course my husband was like, how are you a pastry chef and you don't have anything sweet in the house? Mm -hmm. So that day I was craving a chocolate cake. So I got one from the shop, chocolate, voila. Chocolate cake with chocolate ganache, chocolate liqueur, perfect. Mm. Nice. Um, I'm gonna say, well, pecan pie is right up there. Okay. Uh, I, if it is, it is definitely kryptonite for me. Um, but, and I was always never a big fan of cakes. I was always like, I don't really like cake, but then I started having good cakes on this show, like the princess cake. And I was like, oh, cake is great. I'm, <laughs> this, is, this is very good. Uh, boy, that, so I think pecan pie and, um, uh, boy, yeah, that's, boy, that's right up there. <laughs> I, I can't think of anything that would top that. I mean, or well, you know, like a really good uh, blackberry pie. I would, I would not. Uh, and then Curtis Stone told me about his key lime pie that he has blackberries on top of, and I was like, well, I haven't even had that, and that sounds amazing. Yeah, yeah, that, that does sound amazing. Uh, Were you there, uh, Amanda and Aaron, when he brought chicken pot pie with him? So that was only for the talent, not the talent. It was for you guys and the crew. Oh. We didn't get any of that. Mm. We missed Ooh. that. <laughs> uh -oh. no, I do a... remember that day though, but it was only for the crew and the... the... Okay, well then good to know. It was terrible. I heard that they were like, oh my God, that was some of the best food they ever tasted. Yeah, I, I'm a big fan of chicken pot pie. I was like, it's one bite. I was like, it's the best chicken pot pie I've ever had. <laughs> well, Joe, Joe, you you're not a one trick pony. You also got your CDL license because you, you just you ran that bus. You, you're a certified <laughs> bus driver because you just you just put somebody all underneath that bus, man. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're going over. Yeah, that was bad. Uh, next time, next time, we'll get you the... the <laughs> but Joe, you have to come down to D.C. and check us out. You know, your birthday is coming up in November. You should definitely come in and let us do you a cake and do you right. Uh, I think Washington, D.C. is secretly one of the best food cities in America yeah. because it's the crossroads of so many different cultures all together. And everybody wants to eat. And, uh, and it's, boy, from like the... The Southern food to the Ethiopian food yeah. to the classic American food. I'm just, it's a carnival. It's like a constant food truck roundup of good food. So I, I love DC and it should be a state. Come on. No. It's about time. No. I like how Amanda's like, I, I will not let that happen. That's not, they're not going to let that happen. So no. Yeah, but it should. It should, but they're not going to let it happen. No. Well, hey, Puerto Rico's been a territory. <laughs> but they have Amer they have our money and our signs and everything there. And they're like, yeah, we, uh, we'll see. Right. Thank you. Joel McHale getting political. <laughs> Same thing with Guam and American Samoa. I won't stop. 
yeah, you know what? That was one thing I learned about Joel on the show too. He would he he knew so much history. He would tell yes. us history of different regions and hey, did you know the Nazis occupied? And it's like wow. And not only does he making us laugh when we needed to be serious, but he has a wealth of just knowledge. It's like wow. Well, thank you for that. <laughs> and I will send you the $25 that I told you I would. But well, we got to get, get, get you on Jeopardy. You got to host Jeopardy. You know, got all that useless knowledge. I would do that in a heartbeat. And the, that's the best thing about if you host Jeopardy is that you look like you know everything when <laughs> <laughs> they don't know anything. <laughs> I just thought a campaign, Joe host Jeopardy. <laughs> well, we have had several of our guests here on this show go on to host Jeopardy, um, like um, Aaron Rodgers, Maya and Bialik, Dr. Oz. So, hey, we right. will Joe, in a good word with chief, the Jeopardy chief folks. Chat, chief chat equals Jeopardy hosts. Like, that, that's, this, this, is, this, is your, this is your jump start right here. So we got you. I mean, never mind the other hundred people who didn't make it as host on Jeopardy who've been on the show, but I have a good feeling about you, Joel. Yeah, but that's still two out of a hundred, which is way better than probably most podcasts. Three, Joel, three. Three. Yeah, they haven't called yet. It's okay. They will. It's all right. So Crime Scene really? Kitchen. Is, oh, go ahead. Where are you right now? Are you in Me? your home? I am in my home. Yes. I live in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. What are okay. you? What, is there well, some at first I was like, is she in a bookstore? <laughs> no. And, 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 what what you're seeing behind me is my husband and my son. It's their shrine to the St. Louis Cardinals. They oh. we're big baseball fans, so you just are seeing that's what's behind me is uh, go cards. So all right, did you watch the home run derby last night? We had it on. Um, since we're in Texas, we were kind of hoping for Joey Gallo to to win, and he did not win. So in fact, he didn't even make it out of the first round. So that was a bummer, but. I hate to end on a down note, but go Cardinals, right? <laughs> That's right. That's right. Yes. So, yep. All-star game tonight. Uh, yeah. Check it out. So, <laughs> um, yeah. And Crime Scene Kitchen, that airs Wednesdays at 9 o'clock, 8 o'clock Central on Fox. Where can our viewers go to find out more about what each of you are doing and to find out more about the show and where to watch it? Uh, I'll, I'll jump in at once. I don't know who you. Uh, you can go to dentist.com to find out about my career and what's happening. Uh, I recommend that, uh, and also find a dentist in your area that fits your needs. So that's it's a uh, two birds. Uh, boy, we'll go to. I mean, if you want to find the show, it's also on Hulu. Yeah. So, uh, if you're a streamer, if you want to use that, so you don't have to. Uh, but it'd be great if you watched it both ways. Uh, you can go to my website, joelmchale.com, and um, yeah, that's uh, it's good times. And uh, and I want to say, lastly, not lastly, but Amanda and Aaron, if you if, if out there, if anybody wants to hire these folks for their own television show, they should because uh, they are really good on camera and seriously skilled, uh, and not nice off camera, but real on camera, very nice. <laughs> awesome. Give Thank them a show. No, Thank you so much. Thank you, Joel. Hmm. And um, you can find me on Instagram at AJC614 or at Carter's Cravings. Carter's Cravings. I like it. And what about you, Erin? Where can we find you? You can find me I on um, Miss Joe's Petite Sweets. We're on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. But the IG is at M-S-J-O-S-S-W-E-E-T-S. So it's at Miss Joe's Sweet. You can't put the apostrophe after the So yeah. So it's Miss Joe's Sweet. So yeah, that's where you can find us. Excellent. Uh, and you I'm said not, you Okay, wait. Carter's Cravings, that's out of Waldorf, right? Yes. Okay. And I think I'm already following yes. yours, right, Aaron? Yes, you are, Joe. Thank you. Thank you for that. All right, I just follow Carter's Cravings. Thank you, Joe. Oh, you know, you're so sweet. But no, seriously, Joe, come to DC without the media and the fanfare and just have a good meal and we sit down and talk and just, you know. Aaron, you know it's impossible for me not to go some without the fanfare and all the media. <laughs> I mean, I know you love that, Joe, but you know, I'm, I'm just a country girl from Mississippi, you know, so yeah. But seriously though, whenever you I'll and this Eric, please give I'll, us- I'll switch cars and avoid them. It'll be like <laughs> Joe Pesci and Casino, it'll be great. Yeah, I got, I got the same problem. I can't walk to the dollar store without people recognizing me. So it's, it's, mm -hmm. it's a weird thing, so. Hard life. <laughs> hard life. Hard, hide the the dollar pound cake. He's been in the desert for weeks. 
<laughs> Hide it. Oh. And, 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 and before we had the discussion, uh, before we went live, you guys got a, a, a big announcement tomorrow. So uh, please tune in to their, to their uh, social media handles uh, so you can find out the big news that you guys got that you can announce tomorrow. Awesome. Thank I, you. I do? No, no not you. Okay. Aaron. Aaron does. I do. <laughs> Aaron and Amanda. All right. Who's getting married? <laughs> <laughs> so, man, th th this has been a great interview. We I, could I know what the announcement's going to be. It's going to be we are adding uh, Crown Royal to our <laughs> <Irving> chocolate cake. <laughs> That's it, man. Seven just for, off, just for me. Sure Crown Royal chocolate cake. And we're going to name the cake after you, too. This is a cheap Kevin Osby cake. Yes. Yeah. Man. I have arrived. Mama, I made it. Mama. <laughs> <laughs> it's just going to get, and then at some point, it's just going to be the, like, the chief cake or the, uh, like, you're going to get chief the Osby cake. special? Get the chief. Get the Osby special. Yeah. Chief chief cake. That, that's another. There we go. Yeah. It rolls off the tongue really well. <laughs> It's like beefcake or chief cake. It's good. <laughs> so Joe, Aaron, Amanda, man, thank you so much for tuning us, tuning in. I mean, for joining us today. Uh, we appreciate your time and your thoughts. And we had a great conversation, funny, uh, just uh, all around great, uh, great chat today. So uh, this means so much to our service members and their family and veterans all around the world. Uh, thank you for what you do. Uh, we definitely going to tune in. We're going to support you all the way. We got love and support for all three of you. Uh, so if you ever need anything from us, please let us know. Camo pants. Camo <laughs> pants. And boots, right? Yeah, size 14. <laughs> Coming right up. <laughs> Y'all know Joel is tall, right? I didn't realize he was that tall when I saw him. I was like, oh my God. He is tall. <laughs> He's tall. I actually Googled how tall you were because we were watching an episode and I'm like, Aaron looks really tiny or Joel is really tall, <laughs> which is it? And so my husband's like, oh, he's 6'4". I'm like, well, that explains it. So yeah, we Googled you. Yeah, and I, I wear lifts when I'm on television. <laughs> <laughs> he is tall. He is. Just in case. Awesome, awesome. So, so we're gonna we're gonna end the show. If you guys don't mind hanging out for a little second, I got to get some information from you. But we appreciate your time. We appreciate uh, all that you've done. Uh, you know, we we go we we cheering for you in the. As the season progresses, and uh, we, we appreciate what you do. So thank you much, and uh, Chief Chat out. Chief Chat out. Bye. Thank you. Bye, y'all. Bye.